I'm glad there were only two verses to that, because if you'd have raised it one more, I couldn't have sung it. That was, that was, that ended pretty high. Well, welcome back to Sunday night after three weeks. Um, and thank you for your testimonies, um, for sharing what the Lord is teaching you and, uh, and what you've experienced in these last days. Um, as you probably know, my family, uh, for only the second time in our history of being a family, went to Oregon at Christmas. We normally go in the summer, uh, but uh, this year we left on Sunday night, the 26th, and we came home late this past Wednesday night, Thursday morning, um, and we had a good time with all of Annette's immediate family, her parents, her brother and his family, her sister and her family. Um, when we visit Oregon in the summer, frankly, the, the weather is such that there's a lot more you can do, you know. Uh, you can at least be outside and you can go to the beach and, and things like that. This year, um, we realized that, that with our kids and their cousins, uh, having jobs and graduating from college, beginning to graduate from college and all of that, our days of getting her whole family together are numbered, you know, uh, especially at Christmas. So that's why, it's a big reason why we made the trip out there and the fact that we haven't been there for two years or more because of, three years because of COVID. Um, the weather on the Oregon coast, even on the north coast where they live, in the winter usually involves uh, its share of rain, cold rain, uh, but, but not so often snow and ice. Uh, sometimes, but not, not all that often, not on the coast. Um, this year was an exception <laughs> to that. Uh, a week or so before the trip, we started getting weather alerts about a major snowstorm coming to the northwest, um, which is a problem for, for this reason. Uh, in, in our travel, we fly into Portland, but Annette's family lives on the coast in Astoria. Uh, and Portland and the coast are separated by the coastal mountains, the, the mountain range. So with snow, you, you might get a few inches of snow in Portland and you might get a few inches of snow on the coast. But if you get a few inches of snow in Portland and a few inches of snow on the coast, that means you get a lot of inches of snow in the mountains that separate those two places and you have to drive over the mountain and through the woods to get to grandmother's house. So for uh, at least a week before the trip, I was thinking about how we were going to do that, uh, especially since we were arriving at about one in the morning. Um, on top of that, as Christmas weekend neared, you heard, just like I did, how flights were beginning to be canceled because of COVID. Uh, so through the Christmas weekend there, Christmas Eve and Saturday, and, and then Chris, uh, Christmas Day, Saturday, and then the day after when we were here in, in worship, I, I will admit to you, I was distracted. I was, I was quite distracted. And I was concerned about what was or maybe what wasn't going to happen and how we were going to deal with all those details. Uh, lots of questions kept coming to mind. What if our flight from Lexington is canceled? What do we do? Oh, well, we, on one level, that's an easy, <laughs> we don't fly, right? But, but what do we do after that? If our connecting flight, if we get to Dallas, but then we can't get to, to Portland, what do, what do we do? If we get to Portland and our rental car won't make it through the snow on the pass, what if the mountain pass is closed to traffic? That happens. Uh, what if tire chains are required to cross the pass, that happens too. Uh, they won't let you cross without chains. They won't let you try it. Uh, do rental cars come with chains? <laughs> and if not, where would you buy them at two o'clock in the morning? You know, uh, what if we get there and we can't get home because of canceled flights? I mean, there's all kinds of on and on questions came. And the truth is I was anxious. But it sounds more holy to say I was distracted <laughs> or concerned. Concerned is a great word, right? And yet here's the thing. 
you know. We got there with no problems, no canceled flights. We drove across the pass slowly, but with no issues, no chains required, which is a good thing because there were none in the car. Uh, and even though more and more flights were, were COVID canceled on the day that we were to fly home, ours was not. Uh, we flew to Dallas, and then we flew to Lexington on schedule without any drama at all. Actually, the drama came the day after we got home when all the snow that was out there followed us back here and, and a lot more. Uh, so why do I tell you this? Here's the point in six words. Time spent worrying is wasted time. Time spent worrying is wasted time. That's just the truth of it. Time invested in worry or anxiety about what's to come or what's not to come is utterly wasted time. Now, it's fine to check weather reports and it's fine to check road conditions. It's good to be informed. There's no glory in ignorance. Uh, after all, God gave us brains to think with and to, to make good decisions with, so certainly he expects us to be informed and as prepared as we can be about things. But you know, it is surprisingly easy to move from the desire to know to the desire to control. Surprisingly easy to move from being informed to being worried. We can slide into worry without even really recognizing we're moving. Uh, time spent thinking and time spent planning is valuable, but time spent worrying is wasted. Because the reality is there are issues and happenings in life that we can simply do nothing about. Not a thing. And it's important to recognize those for what they are and, and release them to the Lord when they come along. But facing that reality and really releasing those things is difficult for, I, I think, most of us. Because doing that reminds us of how relatively weak we really are. And we don't like to think of ourselves that way. Uh, we, we imagine ourselves to be the exact opposite, actually. We imagine ourselves to be very powerful and, and utterly in control of ourselves and our surroundings and all of our circumstances. That's what we like to think about ourselves. But the honest truth is, more often than not, that's just not so. It's just not the case. We are surrounded by circumstances. Time is constantly bringing situations and events across our path that we can't predict and that really we can't do much of anything about. And in those times, we wind up moving in one of two directions. We either fall into worry and anxiety, or we consciously decide to give life's unknowns to the Lord, to trust him to deal with them, and then to give our efforts to something that we can actually control. <laughs> It's always been part of the human condition. Certainly, it has. There have always been situations in life that we simply can't control. But, you know, these past couple of years have surely exacerbated that. It's been humbling to see how truly powerless humanity is. Which may well be part of God's purpose in allowing all that he's allowed. You know? I mean... We certainly see that in Scripture. We see that very thing over and over again. God either brings or he allows circumstances in order to humble people who'd become proud. His own chosen people more than anyone else. It's his way of reminding us that we're not him. Even though we think we are and we want to be, we're not him. But it does require us to make a conscious choice, to look at a situation, to realize that we can, in fact, do very little about it, and then to simply say, it, it is going to do no good at all to let this cause me anxiety. So I will choose to trust the Lord with it. I choose to release it to him. That requires a conscious choice. It doesn't happen accidentally. It happens by 
spirit-empowered human choice. This I will do. This is, of course, why the Bible speaks so favorably about trust and faith in God and why it speaks so negatively about worry and anxiety. The fact is they are the opposite of each other. When we choose one, we diminish the other. Every time. If we choose one, we diminish the other. When we worry, we're affirming our power, which is limited. When we trust, we're affirming God's power, which is unlimited. When we worry, we're putting more burden on ourselves. When we trust, we are placing that burden on the Lord. That's why choosing to worry is such a waste of time. It takes us in circles that lead to nowhere good. But choosing to trust, on the other hand, takes us toward God. It always does. It moves us forward in faith. And that affirms the right order of power in our lives and in the situations that our world brings to us. The Apostle Paul put it actually very flatly in his letter to the Philippians, where he writes, Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, he says, here's the alternative. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And that's when the peace of God, which we can hardly understand, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. According to Paul, worry is a waste of time. Worry leads to nowhere good. Only trust in God leads to peace. Jesus addresses all this even more forthrightly, I think, than Paul. He says in Luke 2, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about everything else? And then he, he gives this example. He, he carries it on. He says, Consider how the wildflowers grow. They don't labor or spin, and yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of those. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? Don't set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Don't worry about it. For the pagan world runs after those things. But your father knows that you need them. So seek his kingdom. And all these things will be given to you as well. It's like Jesus is saying, if you insist on being anxious and worrying and trying to control what you simply cannot, even the grass of the field is wiser than that. Because even the grass of the field doesn't worry about how it's going to be clothed. Actually, according to Jesus there in verses 19 and, or, uh, 29 and 30, uh, worrying about things is nothing less than godless behavior. Uh, even things as important as what we'll eat and what we'll drink and what we'll wear. He says that's what people who don't know God do. But you, you don't do that because you know God. So it's not only, not only is trying to control what we in fact cannot control, illogical, and irrational, it's, it's even ungodly. Uh, and it results in needless and fruitless, unproductive anxiety. It's detrimental to our well-being in every way. And on the other hand, though, trusting God to control what we can't leads to increased faith and peace of heart and mind and soul. Releasing to God that which we can't control is entirely beneficial in every way. It seems like such a simple solution to all the anxiety and all the worry that's present in our world today. And it truly is. And yet at the same time, it's a lesson that seems to take most, even very faithful Christ followers, a long time to really learn. Which again may be at least one of the spiritual lessons God's trying to teach us with all the happenings, all the uncertainties of these days, you know? He's trying to teach his people, he's trying to teach his church to trust, to really 
truly leave to him what only he could do anything about anyway. Maybe that's part of God's purification process for his bride. Maybe that's what's really needed. And so maybe this whole experience that we're living of of COVID and politics and supply chain issues and economic messes and international crises, all the other uncertainties of our world, if all that is what it takes to teach us to trust, well, maybe it's more of a blessing than we realize. Maybe it's more of a blessing than we want to think it is. So along with all of our other prayers for this coming year, prayers for health and for peace and for guidance and for that ever-elusive normalcy, whatever that is. Um, Maybe the first among our prayers ought to be, Lord, in this next year, no matter what comes, above all else, would you give me grace to trust you more? Would you give me grace to trust you more? I don't know what it is in your life that you're struggling to trust God with. Um, But I invite you to pray that prayer. In fact, I invite you to pray that prayer about that specific thing. Um, And you can pray it in our closing song, because we're going to sing, basically, a prayer along those lines. Uh, It's number 350. It's an affirmation that ends with a prayer. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Let's stand and sing our closing prayer together.